Today, we're going to create an exciting game using visual coding. In this game, Pico must reach the apple by jumping on the tiles. Use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move Pico right, left, and up. Once Pico reaches the apple, you can proceed to the next level. Let's dive into the code and understand each step. You can begin this program in two ways. Firstly, templates are available in our digital content, you can access them from the slides by clicking on the link provided. This will redirect you to a page similar to this one. Click on the kebab menu and then select the download option to download the SB3 file. Next, go to the CS Lab and click on the Visual Coding 3 ID icon. Navigate to the File button and then select Load from your computer. Choose the file that you have downloaded. You can skip the initial steps like adding backdrop and sprites, because it is already there in this file. Otherwise, you can start the program directly by clicking on the ID icon. In this scenario, you have to add the sprite and backdrops. Start by deleting the default sprite using the delete button. Then, click on choose a sprite and select the sprite named Pico Walking. To introduce the next sprite, hover over the choose a sprite button and click on paint. Utilize the square icon at the bottom to draw rectangles and drag and drop them onto the drawing area. You can customize the color using the fill and outline options at the top. Since this sprite serves as the platform for Pico to walk on, ensure it's long enough to cover the entire width of the stage. Name this sprite as Ground. Now, let's add another sprite by clicking the Choose a Sprite button. This sprite acts as a hanging platform for Pico to reach the apple. Similarly to before, create two square shapes and adjust their positions accordingly. This sprite should have two costumes. Click on Costume 1 on the left and choose the option to duplicate it by right-clicking. Edit the duplicated costume to create Costume 2. Name this sprite as a platform. Finally, let's add the lappled sprite. Adjust the size of the apple sprite as needed. Adjust its position accordingly. Create two costumes for the apple with two different positions by right-clicking and duplicating the costume. Align the positions of the apple's costume 1 with the platform's costume 1, and the apple's costume 2 with the platform's costume 2. Select the Pico sprite and adjust its size by changing the value here. To enrich our game environment, let's add the backdrops. First, click on Choose a Backdrop and select Space 2. Next, let's incorporate another backdrop. Click on the Backdrop button and select to Arctic. Make sure to designate the space backdrop for the stage. With these initial setups completed, we are ready to proceed further with our game development. Start coding, click on the Code tab. Navigate to the Code palette and click on Variables. Click on Make a Variable to generate a new variable. You can create two variables, up speed and going up. Up speed is the speed of jumping. Going up is a variable for getting the status of whether the sprite is jumping or not. Select the Pico sprite and let's begin coding for Pico. To begin by clicking the flag icon, go to the events and choose when flag clicked. Drag the Pico sprite to the position where we want it to be when the program begins. Navigate to the motion category and select the go to X, Y block. Adjust the direction by using point in direction 90. This sets the initial position of the sprite. Now, let's add the code block for Pico to make it jump when we press the up arrow key. When the program starts, space 2 should be the backdrop. Navigate to the looks block and select switch backdrop and set the backdrop to space 2. Additionally, set minimum starting speed for jumping. Use the set my variable block and change the value of variable up speed to 10. We're dealing with two conditions here. Access the controls category and utilize two if blocks. Embed one if block inside the other. Firstly, 
Verify if the up arrow key is pressed. Navigate to the sensing block and select the space key pressed block, adjusting the key to up arrow. Subsequently, confirm if the Pico sprite is touching the ground sprite. Select the touching color block, click on the color then the color picker icon, ensuring to pick the color of the ground. This guarantees that the Pico sprite is on ground. Proceed to the variable category and employ that set variable block to establish the up speed variable as 15. Similarly, set the going up variable to 1, indicating the sprite is jumping. Next, employ the repeat button from the control section to facilitate the jump. From the motion block, introduce a change Y by block. Setting the variable up speed as Y value. Finally, implement a change variable block from variables to decrement the up speed variable by 1. This ensures a fluid and authentic jumping animation. After completing the jump, set the going up variable value back to 0 to ensure that the sprite is on the ground. Place the whole code inside the forever block. Returning to the second code block, let's set up the next condition. Include an if block from the control section. Here, we're checking for two conditions. Navigate to the operators and incorporate an and block. If the Pico sprite is not touching the ground and it has finished jumping, then we want it to move downward. To achieve this, incorporate a not block from the operators section. Since we're checking if the sprite is touching the ground, we can duplicate the touching color block that we used previously and place it inside the not block. Include an equals block from the operators to compare the going up variable with the value zero to ensure that the sprite has completed jumping. If both conditions are met, make the sprite move downward. Include a change Y by block from the motion section. Adjust the Y value as per the up speed. Additionally, use a change my variables block from the variable category to decrement the up speed by 2. This decreases the speed of jumping when going up. Place the code inside a forever loop. To enable the Pico sprite to move left and right, we need to implement code blocks based on key presses. Begin by including the when flag clicked block from the events category. From the controls block, select an if block and insert key pressed from the sensing category inside it. Adjust the key to the right arrow. When the right arrow key is pressed, the sprite should move right. Select point in direction 90 to orient the sprite towards the right direction. Then, utilize the move 10 steps block from the motion category. To create a walking animation, select next costume from the looks block. This code will enable the sprite to move right when the right key is pressed. Duplicate the rift block by right-clicking and connecting to it. Change the right arrow to the left arrow and include a set rotation style left to right block. Adjust the value of point in direction to minus 90, directing the sprite towards the left and move 10 steps to the left. Use it forever, block from the control category and place the code blocks inside it to ensure continuous execution of the commands. Let's set up the code blocks for the platform sprite. Select the platform sprite and begin coding by using when flag clicked from the events category. Utilize the switch costume block from the looks category and set the costume to costume 1. This ensures that when the program begins, costume 1 will be displayed. Now, let's add the code blocks for advancing to the next level in the Pico sprite. Make sure to select the Pico sprite. Start by using when flag clicked from the events block. Here, we're checking for level completion. If the Pico sprite collides with and touches the Apple sprite, we want to proceed to the next level. Check if the sprite is touching the apple by using an if block from the control category and the touching mouse pointer block from the sensing category. Change it as touching apple. When the Pico sprite touches the apple, we want to broadcast a message to indicate that we have completed the current level. Use a broadcast block from the events category and create a new message named next level. Additionally, if the sprite is touching the apple, change the backdrop by using the switch backdrop block and setting it to the next backdrop. Place this code inside a forever loop to continuously monitor for level completion. For the upcoming level, modify the platform's appearance. Choose the platform sprite. Navigate to the events section and select when I receive broadcast next level. 
Then, in the looks category, add the next costume block to switch to the second costume, indicating the progression of the game. Additionally, generate a new broadcast message named Set Start. This will signal the Pico sprite to prepare for the next level by initializing its position. Select the Apple sprite and follow the same procedure used for the platform sprite. When it receives next level broadcast and changes the costume accordingly, move on to the Pico sprite and establish the next set of code blocks. Start with when I receive set start broadcast. Set the sprite's position using the go to X and Y block from the motion category, ensuring it's adjusted as required. Also, ensure the sprite face is right by using the point in direction 90th block. After completing these steps, run the program by clicking the flag icon. Press the right arrow to move right. Left arrow to move left and up arrow to jump. Save the project by clicking here and give it a proper name. Enjoy the game. Thank you.